Hi guys, I'm Riley with Dark Arrow. If our project is new to you, what we've been up to is we're building an airplane called the Dark Arrow 1. Throughout the process of building the Dark Arrow 1, one of the questions that we've been asked a lot is, how do you know that the Dark Arrow 1 will fly? This is a good question, and I've struggled to come up with a good way to answer it thoroughly, at least in simple terms. The short answer would just be that we use engineering tools to make predictions about how the Dark Arrow 1 will fly, but this answer doesn't really answer anything. I think a better way to answer this question, at least partially, would be to demonstrate with a specific example. First, I need to cover some background information. I mentioned that we use engineering tools to make predictions about how the Dark Arrow 1 will fly. These tools include engineering equations, wind tunnel testing, and simulation tools such as CFD. These tools all work together to help us progress into flight testing, which is the true measure of if our airplane will fly. CFD is probably the least known of these tools, but it's probably the best one to use to demonstrate an example of how the Dark Arrow 1 will fly. CFD stands for Computational Fluid Dynamics, and it's a tool that allows both scientists and engineers alike to simulate fluid phenomena. Historically, the tool has not been used a lot in the design of home-built kit aircraft, mainly because of the cost and complexity of the tool. However, the latest CFD software has gotten a lot more accessible and a lot easier to use. In our case, we use SimScale's cloud-based CFD software to simulate airflow over the Dark Arrow 1 airframe and make predictions about how it will fly. The example I'm going to go over is simulating stall conditions in the Dark Arrow 1. What is a stall? To demonstrate the concept, I'm going to use our scale wind tunnel model. The lift generated by the wing of an airplane is related to the wing's angle of attack or the angle that it's flying into oncoming airflow. At a shallow angle of attack, the wing produces minimum lift and the air flowing over the wing follows the contour of the wing surface. As your angle of attack increases, the wing produces more lift. And there exists a critical angle of attack where maximum lift is produced or the angle of maximum lift. A stall occurs beyond your angle of maximum lift and it's characterized by a reduction in lift as well as the airflow starts to separate from the surface of the wing. In general, aircraft engineers want to design a wing that stalls in a gentle, predictable manner. Ideally, the stall would begin at the root of the wing and progress outboard along the wing as the angle of attack increases. The ailerons, which provide roll control, for the aircraft are positioned out at your wingtips, so it's best to have the wingtips stall last so that you can maintain roll control as the stall develops. This gentle progressive stall provides an indication to the pilot that a stall is approaching. If your wing is not designed to provide a progressive stall, you could have a sudden loss of lift without warning. A sudden loss of lift is dangerous, especially at low altitude during takeoff and landing because you have very little time for recovery. Okay, so what can SimScale CFD tool tell us about the stall behavior of the Dark Arrow 1? We use SimScale to virtually fly the wing of the Dark Arrow 1 at a range of angles of attack to determine the angle of maximum lift and where stall occurs. Once we knew the angle of maximum lift, we further refined the simulation in a region a few degrees before and a few degrees after stall so that we could see how the stall progresses along the wing as angle of attack increases. The wing of the Dark Arrow 1 was designed from the beginning to have a gentle progressive stall that begins at the root of the wing and progresses out towards the tip. SimScale's CFD tool helped us design a wing that stalls in the way that we want it to. Let's look at some specific simulation results that show this progressive stall behavior. We'll jump over into the simulation environment to see this. Okay, first we'll look at the wing flying at a shallow angle of attack as you would see in high speed cruise flight. To keep things simple, we're going to be just looking at the right wing alone with the rest of the airframe removed. Don't worry about any of the colors, I mostly have everything set up here just to make things easier to see. I have displayed airflow streamlines over the wing and you can see the flow is nice and uniform over the wing and the streamlines follow the contour of the wing. We refer to this as the airflow remaining attached to the wing. Nothing too exciting to see here though at our shallow angle of attack. Let's go to a little bit steeper angle of attack like you would see in a steep turn or a climb. The airflow is still attached to the wing here and the wing is generating more lift. Again, nothing too exciting happening yet. Now, if we go to an even higher angle of attack, we can see the first warning signs of a stall appearing. There's a small pocket of airflow that starts to separate at the root of the wing. This is what we want to see. We want to see the wing starting to stall at the root first. 
as we continue to increase the angle attack even further, which is what would happen as your airspeed is reduced, as your airplane touches down to land, we see the stall start to progress and develop further at the root of the wing. You have the inboard portion of the wing stalling first, and you can see the airflow separated in this region near the root of the wing. If we creep up a bit higher in angle attack, you start to see the majority of the airflow separating from the wing and the total lift generated by the wing is now dropping. The wing tips try to hang on to the very end of the stall though, which is what we want to happen. As you can see, we can simulate stall and start to build a predicted model of the stall behavior. This is just one example of predicting flight characteristics using engineering tools. So circling back to the original question of how do you know that the dark arrow one will fly? We know it will fly because we analyzed many different aspects of the design and different flight conditions in a similar manner to what I've shown here. Hopefully all that made sense. If you guys have any questions about anything that we talked about here, leave it in the comments section and we'll be happy to answer you. We're planning some future videos talking more about simulation and testing, so if you have some topics that you'd like us to cover, leave it in the comments and hopefully we can talk about it in another video. I'll leave a link to SimScale simulation software in the description of this video so you can go check it out and use it to analyze some of your own projects. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time.